we'll start today by talking about strings, which are another sequence type in Python. Strings are an abstraction. This is important to remember. In lots of different programming languages, strings are represented in different ways, but they're always a data type that's meant to represent text. And text is very flexible because we as humans are linguistic beings. We express everything, all of our ideas in text. And we even express our computer programs in text. So we can represent data using text here I've represented some numbers, a tuple, and a Boolean value, all just with some strings of letters and numbers and punctuation. We can also represent language. And here's a quote that I like from Shakespeare, because I really think he's talking about abstraction. And as imagination bodies forth the forms of things to unknown, and the poet's pen turns them to shapes and gives to airy nothing a local habitation, and a name. Love it. We can also represent programs. Here's a string, just a bunch of letters and uh, punctuation. But of course, to the Python interpreter, this means something. In fact, we can even ask the entire Python interpreter to interpret it. So I'll start up Python. And we can have a string such as the number 200, and there's a function called eval. It's built in. What does it do? It evaluates the source in the context of the globals and locals that we have available, using a string that represents a Python expression. Yada, yada, yada. What happens if I eval the string 200? I get 200. What happens if I evaluate a string 1 plus 2 plus 3? Well, it's going to treat that as a Python expression and evaluate it. And these strings are just pieces of text. You know, I can build them up incrementally. I can say the first part of my string is lambda f lambda. I can say the second part is x lambda y f x comma y. So what happens if I put together the first part and the second part? Well, I get a complex lambda expression. And what happens if I assign that to a name after evaluating it? Well, now curry is a lambda function. And what does it do? It curries, just like it says. So if I curry add, and then I call that function on 3, and then I call the resulting function on 4, I get 7. So text can represent anything, even programs. Now strings in Python do have some rules about how they're created, and let's go over those quickly. So string literals actually have three different forms. Here are two of them. I can write single quotes, I am a string, and that gives me a string. I can write double quotes, I've got an apostrophe, and that gives me another string with double quotes around it. And I'm not limited to putting just uh, Latin characters in a string, I can put any characters I want. Let's say Niha. Now, single quoted and double quoted strings are equivalent. The only reason why you'd use one over the other is that if you start out with a double quoted string, you can put single quotes in the middle of it, and vice versa. Now, the third form is to have a triple quoted string, which we've seen for doc strings and functions. And that means that I can write a string that spans multiple lines. Now, when I evaluate this string, which starts here and ends all the way down here, I get back a string where the line breaks, meaning when we go to a new line, are represented as a backslash and then the letter N. So what's going on there? Well, a backslash is an escape, which means that a special character is being encoded. So this N really isn't the letter N. Backslash N are treated as a unit. And in particular, backslash n is called a line feed character, which represents a new line in Python. Strings are sequences. How do we know? Well, we should think back to our sequence abstraction. What are the rules for being a sequence? You need to have a length, and you need to have the ability to select an element from the sequence. Well, we can do both of those. 
So if I have a string, Berkeley, which I bound to the name city, I can get the length of that string, and it will tell me that it's eight long, B-E-R-K-E-L-E-Y. And I can use element selection in order to get the element at index three, zero, one, two, three is the K. Now the interesting thing here is that strings are a little different from other sequences and that the element of a string is itself a string, but has only one character in it. Whereas the element of a tuple doesn't necessarily need to be a tuple. It could be a number or a string or whatever. So strings can't contain anything. They have to just contain text. Now let's take a look at the other properties of sequences and how they relate to the string type in Python. And here we'll find a couple of anomalies. So if I have a string such as where's Waldo, I can ask is here in where's Waldo and it will say true. Why is that? Well here is right here. And likewise I can say is H in where's Waldo and that will say true. Strings also support slicing. So if I say where's Waldo and then take the letters just from index one all the way through index five, and I'll get here. What else? Well, there's a way to count a letter. So I can count how many times the letter A appears in Where's Waldo. I can count the number of times the letter I appears in Mississippi. I can even count how many times a smaller string appears in a larger string? ISSI appears once. Now you might think that's funny. ISSI appears here. It also appears here. Shouldn't that be twice? Well, the count method only counts non-overlapping instances of the string we're looking for. So just to review those properties, string membership differs from other sequence types. So in and not in operators match substrings. I can say here in well, where's Waldo and it will say true, which is different from saying it is two, three, four in this tuple, one, two, three, four, five, that's false. So you can't match a subsequence inside a tuple, but you can match a substring inside a string. Why the difference? Well, when you're working with strings, we usually care about words, which are multiple letters long, more than we just care about individual letters. In computer science, Letters are called characters. Well, not character Waldo, but character means the letter D or the letter O. Okay, so the count method also matches substrings, which is different from the count method on a tuple. So as you saw, Mississippi, can you can count the letter I, but you can also count the substring ISSI, but it only counts non-overlapping occurrences of the substring. And since these two occurrences are overlapping, it only counts the first one. 